Hello and welcome to the webinar for ECED's 218's recent development. We hope that you get a lot of information about how this course was developed and how it's structured through joining um, and listening to this recording if you are teaching this course in the future. Um, I am Anna Blankenbaker and I am an instructional designer with the Ivy Online team. And I also have here with me Marty, Marty Sedars, who is our course developer, the person who authored much of this material as a subject matter expert. So I'm gonna stop talking for a moment and give her a chance to speak to some of the inspirations and motivations that she used in designing the ECED 218 course. Hello everyone, my name is Marty Stoddart and I'm from the Evansville campus of Ivy Tech. So this class is called Leadership and Mentoring in Early Childhood. And it differs a little bit from the um, uh, administration class because you know there's the 210, the administration class, really focuses on um, some of the business end, budgets, um, scheduling and such. Uh, and so I wanted to think about this class um, leadership broadly, but we also know that every organization has that one person who's not officially an administrator, but still is kind of the psychological leader. So I wanted to kind of think about that person and how can you develop those leadership skills to be that person, even though you would use those skills also if you were officially an administrator, but we're focusing on maybe what we call soft skills um, and how to be that psychological leader with this course. Wonderful, thank you, Marty, for that review. We're gonna jump over to the syllabus, um, give you some key bits of information that are important for students to be prepared to begin their studies with ECED 218. Of course, you would want to fill out your course specific instructor information for you who are teaching this course, um, your own contact information, as well as if you are a full-time faculty member, your campus supervisor's information. If you are an adjunct teaching this course, this content section here that is now highlighted can be removed. This course does use two textbooks. The textbooks are published by NACI and Cengage. However, there are some unique characteristics to these particular textbooks. Unfortunately, neither of these textbooks are available in a digital format. The NACI resource is a publication item that is a physical resource. And the Cengage book, um, the, the date of publication is not listed here, but it is an older publication date. And Cengage has notified us that because of the date of publication, it is not available through Cengage Unlimited. The Cengage Unlimited toolbar item is still present in the course navigation menu so that students can access the Cengage Unlimited package um, for supplemental resources that they might want to use in terms of other assignments within the course or other interest areas that they have. But both of these textbooks will have to be ordered by students. And so you do have a link here that gives instructions on how to go about ordering these two books. As we scroll through the syllabus, there are a couple of other sections that are pretty important to the development of this course. The first one is, do students need to come to campus for any purpose within this course? And the answer to that is no. Students do not have to come to campus for this course. It is entirely asynchronous um, and all of the content is available through the module section. So as soon as we finish reviewing the content here on the syllabus, we'll hop over into the modules. There is one synchronous activity that is optional for students, required for you as the instructor. Um, it is very important that students feel like they can reach out to their instructor, have access to their instructor. And so we're setting that standard by offering a web-based live session in the first week or two of the term. There's more instructions on that in the instructor resources module. So you can look there for more information, and we will come back to this in a moment as well. The assignments and grading section lists in large um, groupings the types of assignments that are contained in the course. And since that is Marty's area of expertise, I'll let her speak to some of these. 
Okay. Well, um, let's look at the discussions first. There are nine discussions. And since there are eight modules, uh, that means there are two in the first module. So the, the very first discussion is actually um, an introduction. So students have a chance to introduce themselves to each other and to you. And I would encourage you to set the due date for at least the initial post before the, um, the date for reporting students who are not participating. So this gives students a very easy first assignment to turn in if they are indeed uh, participating in the course. Um, so the first discussion, that introduction, everyone can see all the posts right away. And so again, I would encourage you to maybe go ahead and put your introduction there before the course even starts so students can see your introduction right away and also kind of have a guide for how to do that assignment. The remaining discussions, students will not be able to see anyone else's posts until they make their initial posts. And I felt like that was important so that students are really coming up with some original thought. The one other thing to talk about is the discussions for modules five and seven are asking students to post their materials for major projects. And so for those two modules, you really are gonna give the students two weeks. You're gonna let them have until the end of that module to post their initial materials and then give them some time into the next module to comment on at least two classmates posts. All the other uh, discussions can be done within their, um, their module week. But for those two, to give everyone time to thoroughly complete their materials, uh, it's really suggested that you give them until the end of the week to post their materials and then some time into the next module uh, to, to comment. All right. Um, so you can kind of look over. We're going to make an employee handbook entry. Twice, we're going to look at the NACI Code of Ethical Conduct. Once, um, the supplement specifically for administrators and leaders, and once for the general code. Um, they're going to create a couple evaluation tools. The, you are going to do a couple of research papers, and they're short ones. They're just two-page papers, but students will have to do research outside of class materials. Uh, and then there are some major presentations, which are really taking the place of exams. So um, if we look at uh, the first one for, um, let's see, go into module four, would you like me to go ahead and discuss that in detail right now? Or? So module let's four. Take a, is, let's take a look at module four. Um, sorry, I was sure. muted. Let's okay. take a look at that when we look at some exceptions to okay. the module order. Okay, so we'll go over modules four, five, and seven in a little bit more detail uh, in a few minutes. So, all right, because those are those major presentations I just mentioned. Uh, the students are going to do a couple of, re of reflections. Um, we're going to talk about um, professional development and some training opportunities and how to find it outside of what you create yourself also. Okay. And then you can see when we scroll down here that the class is worth, um, let's see, let's go down to the bottom, I believe it was 900 points. So altogether 900 points, 300 of those are those major projects. All right, well, sorry everybody for the fast scrolling, but we do have to get back up to the top of the page in order to reaccess our course navigation menu. So we're gonna hop over into the <clears throat> modules section. Um, and as I had said before, there are some really helpful resources in the instructor resources area. We had already talked about the live assignment instructions being present here, but even more so than the live assignment instructions, we do ask you to please review in detail the instructor guide and these module announcements. These are suggested or recommended module announcements for each module of the course. Um, Marty wrote these up based off of the um, curriculum and what we think are going to be really helpful items for students to be successful in the course. You can certainly um, create your own, but we wanted you to have a place to begin from. Also in the instructor resources area, is a report of course issue a report course issues link and faculty evaluation. Um, the report of course issues. If you find anything in the course that is broken or inaccurate or needs to be reviewed by a subject matter expert, um, please use this link to report that information, and then we'll come back to it, look it over, and see what needs to be changed. If there is a change that needs to take place, that always happens through our community of instructors organization for ECED 218. If you do not have access to that, please email the ID team 
at ids at ivytech.edu and we'll see to it that you are enrolled. At the end of the course, you can fill out the fac faculty evaluation of course design. This is a tool that helps us to have some suggestions and some feedback on the curriculum when this course is undergoing redevelopment in the future. Each module has a similar setup. Um, it begins with an overview page, gives a bit of a concise summary about what students are going to be learning in this module, might link to something in their life or in their future careers that are um, going to be relevant to the content of the particular module of learning. Then comes a learning activities page. This is where all of the instructional content of the course is present. So if there's a reading assignment or a website or a video to watch, that is likely found here on the learning activities page. This next section of items may differ from module to module just slightly, but it's all of the graded items that students need to complete for this particular module. Overall, you're gonna see a pretty similar setup with a discussion and some other activities, and then following with that and next steps page. The next steps page provides a summary of what has been learned in this module, a kind of a snippet of what's coming up and the a link between the two. It also helps students to pace themselves for larger assignments. So if there's any recommendations on how to complete a major assignment, when to get started, when to start reviewing the assignment instructions. Um, we are helping students with enhancing their executive function skills in that small way in the course through the next steps page. There are a few exceptions to this general format. The first exception is the introductory live meeting here in module one. This is a location that provides you a placeholder for your Zoom link, any additional information that you would want to share with students about that live session. Again, this is optional for students. So this is also a location where you can post the meeting recording after you have completed the session. And there are more instructions available for that in the instructor resources module. Marty noted that there are also some additional exceptions um, that she would like to review regarding some of those larger presentation components within this course. So I'm gonna hand over the presentation to her and let her talk you through those particular assignments. I don't believe I can still scroll the screen, but if we'd like to scroll down to module number four, um, so instead of having exams, we have three major projects. And the first one appears in module number four. And I would encourage you back in module number one to start talking about this with your students so they have time to work on this project. So you can see um, we have the team building activity report form and the video or PowerPoint and handout that are all connected together. So together they are 100 points. I divided it into three links just because it's different formats for turning those in. And it's just, makes it a little bit easier to turn in the, the work. So the students are going to create a team building activity and not simple trust falls, but an actual activity where they're getting together and working together on a project of some sort. Uh, you know, maybe putting together a new library or um, some, some equipment on the playground or something. So a project with a beginning and an end product or end service. And so this uh, report form will be where they describe the project in, in detail. And there is a form to download and fill out and, and uh, then upload for you. And then the next part, they're gonna have a video or a PowerPoint to explain it. Now, this is how it's written is that they have a choice of a video or a PowerPoint. But if there's another format that you would accept for this, uh, be thinking about that from the beginning so that you can let students know that you might accept something else. You know, maybe they create a Prezi or something. So make sure that you have other options available if there are other formats that you're willing to accept. And then the last part is the handout that will accompany, um, accompany this so that students have that, that information that they'll pass out. So say while you're doing this team building activity, the members of your staff are looking at that handout. So together that's a 100 point project. It's a big chunk of the grade. Right. So then if we look down at module number five, we have another one of these. And again, I would encourage you all the way in module number one, that first week to be talking about this. Um, <clears throat> again, it's a, a professional development project. So you may be called upon 
uh, whether you're an administrator or even a, a teacher in the school, you may be called upon to present some professional development. And I've done this in every school where I've worked. Um, so you're going to start with uh, creating a handout that the, the um, staff members would look at. You're gonna make a presentation and then you'll have some workshop materials. So all together, if you look at those three pieces, it's another 100 point project. And again, with the presentation, you can see that just about the middle of that module. The project is written as if the students are going to make a video, but if you're willing to accept other formats or if you have students who aren't able to make a video, decide in advance what other formats you will accept and um, communicate that with your students. And again, I encourage them, if you have an idea that I don't have up here, let me know because again, they may have access to uh, uh, Prezi or some other uh, presentation software uh, and it, technology is changing so fast by the time this class goes live in the fall, there may be something new anyway. So I encourage the students to, um, to be creative and let me know if they have other ideas. All right, so the students are going to actually do a professional development workshop with this project. All right, and then if we scroll down to module number seven, this is the advocacy project. And this is the very important um, activity that all of us in early childhood engage in where we are advocating for our students. We may be talking to, um, to lawmakers or administrators or people who give grants and advocating for our students. So this is another major project. And you can see the overview, the handout, the presentation uh, are all together going to be a 100 point project. So the overview again is a form to fill out where the students will just describe their project. The handout might be a letter. It might be a flyer that is passed out say at a school board meeting with information. So this is what you're presenting to the public. And then the presentation, again, it, as written, it's written to be a video. However, you have the option of creating other um, or allowing students to create other forms of presentation. So before uh, you get to this module, be thinking about what other formats you will accept. Um, again, some students may not have video capability or they may have um, access to something else that, that is new and exciting that we haven't thought of yet. So. Um, I encourage students in there to talk with you and so you be ready to uh, see what you'll accept. So this is the advocacy project where students are going to select a problem, uh, uh, devise a solution and then advocate for that solution. And we really want this project to be something that is specific to their center or their communities. So um, students will be presenting to you um, in a previous uh, module presenting some ideas for their project just for you to approve the the uh, topic but we really want this to be something they can actually use something very specific to their own programs great thanks marty um, the other and final exception to the module structure is the student course evaluation um, that comes up in module eight and it does intentionally occur at the very end of the course, but we would like to know what students think about this curriculum. Uh, we have an opportunity to uh, really look at the future of this particular course based off of this student feedback. Um, and we would really love it if students would think thoughtfully about this. So if you could encourage them to complete the student course evaluation link that's here in module eight, that would be super super helpful. Um, this is the curriculum that is going to be in place for summer of 2021 um, for ECED 218. If you do have any questions, if you have any concerns, um, please reach out to Marty. She is going to be the uh, course mentor for this summer. That may or may not change. Um, and in the fall, as we have courses join into a tiered mentoring model. Um, but you can always request, like I said earlier, access to the community of instructors org, and that would list whomever is the current mentor um, for any given semester in that location. Um, thank you again for your time reviewing this video, and we look forward to um, your engagement with ECED 218 and you coming in and customizing this course and helping students to learn more about leadership and mentoring from the experiences that you have had. Have a great day.